The movie begins with a young lady doing house chores. She's making the bed, cleaning the mirrors, and vacuuming the floor, basically doing everything she can to leave the house spotless. She's just about done and goes to meet the house owner to collect her pay. The old man tells her he won't be around for a week and would like her to take care of his place for him, so he writes her a check for this week and the next. They talk a bit about how she's still looking for an apartment, and she leaves. The lady drives past a house and stops to look at it with an unexplainable expression. Maybe someone who broke her heart lives there. She drives off and finally gets to her house. From the look of things, she's not going to own this house for much longer, as there is an eviction notice on her front door. She settles in and later picks up her phone to search for some more cleaning jobs. She sees this job from a guy named Matt, requesting a live-in housekeeper. She lunges at it. It seems like God has decided to smile upon her because this is exactly what she needs. She texts the guy and tries to set up a meeting. The next morning, we see the lady jogging when suddenly she receives a message from Matt, telling her to come around at 3 that day. The woman is about to be practically homeless, so she wastes no time in preparing. Before the clock hits 3, she is already parked at this red weird-looking house. She stares at it for some seconds as if rethinking her decision, and then gets out of her car and walks to the house. She sees a man gardening, and he approaches her and asks how he can help her. She introduces herself as Maya and tells him she's here for the cleaning job. They exchange pleasantries and Matt asks to show her around. He takes her upstairs and shows her the room where she'll be staying. It's quite spacious, but there is just something about this place that is foreboding. But our girl is desperate. Matt tells her that his sister lived in this particular room after their father passed away. Maya sizes up the room and sees that there's dust everywhere. Then she proceeds to ask Matt if she can move in immediately, because the lease to her former place just ran out. Matt obliges, Anne tells her he will give her a key to this room, and proceeds to continue showing her around the house. Maya sees a lot of weird stuff, and asks Matt what it is about. Matt tells her he is a collector like his mum. He then tells her not to enter his room or go to the basement. Apart from these two places, every other place is accessible. And just as they are discussing, this lady walks in and introduces herself as Eileen, Matt's younger sister. She looks happy to see Maya, and tells her that Matt is a little messy. Matt defends himself, saying he likes to call it slightly disorganized. Maya goes back to her place and starts packing her things to leave. She sees this photo album and takes out some pictures to look at. She puts the box in the trunk of her vehicle and then takes one last look at the place before driving off. She finally gets to Matt's place and meets Eileen, who gives her the key and tells her that she helped tidy up the room. Eileen proceeds to ask Maya if she has more luggage that needs help. She is quite surprised to hear that that was all Maya came with. So Maya heads into the house and up to her room to start settling in, and after a few moments, Matt comes in to check on her. After they exchange greetings, he presents her with this housewarming gift, and boy, this is definitely not the type of action figure I want in my room. This thing is as creepy as the word creepy, and Maya asks if he's sure about giving her something that belonged to his mum, and he tells her he's fine with it. The next day, she begins her work and starts with cleaning her room before proceeding to clean the house. Later that day, a friend of hers, Emily, comes to visit. This girl seems like the out type because she just casually sees a hat on the mannequin and places it on her head to take a picture. She came with some wine. I guess these girls were planning to drink after all. They chat a bit, and Emily tells her that past her old neighborhood and her house looks the same. The girl proceeds to ask about Maya's dad and how he's doing, and Maya gives a not-so-convincing answer, saying that he is good. Emily realizes she might have overstepped and apologizes. Maya just shrugs it off and asks her if she would like to stay the night. She agrees, and the girls go to Maya's room to finish drinking and play some games. After taking a shower, Emily cannot help but be self-aware because this entire place is creeping her out, and to be honest, it's not only her. She tells Maya that the place smells weird, and Maya once again shrugs it off, saying it's because it's an old house. We are taken to a scene of a house where a girl is painting on the floor, and her dad is doing some gardening. But then something mysterious happens. The girl just disappears, and we see the father crying and holding on to another girl. The scene is cut, and we see Maya standing right in front of the house. She is crying. There is a man who just stares at her, wondering what could be wrong, and when she notices him, she just backs away. Emily is woken up by loud stomping in the house. She goes to see what is making such sounds. She finds Matt stomping on the floor and screaming loudly at someone we can't see to shut up. Okay, this confirms it. Matt is definitely hiding something we don't know. Just then, Maya walks into the house and greets Matt. She tells him she was just catching up on other jobs and will start cleaning this place in just a moment. Matt ignores everything she just said. The only thing he cares about is if there is someone upstairs. Maya quickly apologizes and tells him her friend is over, but she could tell her to go if it is a problem. Matt tells Maya not to worry, but next time, it would be nice if she took permission first before taking such actions on her own. And, Maya apologizes even more. 
Maya walks up to her room and, as soon as she enters, she sees Emily waiting for her by the door. She tells her that Matt is acting really weird, but this girl is simply a master of shrugging things off. They talk about it for a bit, before Emily finally decides to leave. Maya opens the door to the attic. It looks dark and creepy. As she tries to clear the place, a box falls, and she sees a small object inside. She looks at it and decides to keep it. Later that day, Maya wears a pretty gown and goes to see her dad in his house. She talks to him for a while as he stares at nothing the whole time. She apologizes for something she did and goes inside. Matt is in front of the house installing security cameras when Emily walks up to him and asks about Maya, but he says she's not in at the moment. He tells her that she can wait for Maya as he has a spare key for her room and takes her inside. Matt asks her to come to his room to help him move a dresser. She's reluctant, but agrees to help him. He starts talking to her in some sort of creepy manner, but luckily, Maya comes back, so she leaves his room immediately. When they get to Maya's room, Emily tells Maya that she needs to leave the house because Matt has been giving very creepy vibes. She tells her that he has a door in his room that has a padlock. She goes on to tell Maya that she can spend the night at her parents' place, and the following morning, they'll come get her stuff. But Maya is being very stubborn and refuses to listen to her. She calls her privileged and asks her to leave the house, even though Emily is only trying to help because she cares about her. Emily throws the room key on her bed and leaves. Emily goes to the bathroom and turns on the tap to take a bath. She looks up and sees a small hole covered with a metal plate with holes in it. Later that night, Maya hears noise coming from downstairs and goes to check it out. But she gets scared and runs back up to her room. A man, Gabriel, is seen by the pond taking pictures of ducks with his camera. Maya parks her car and goes to say hi to him. He tells her that the camera film is something really ancient. He tells her that he can help her out with it for free. Maya asks if they can hang out and take some photos, to which Gabriel agrees. He also tells her that he can help if she ever gets in trouble with the IRS. Maya gets home and goes outside to dust some pillows as she cleans the house. When she gets back in, she sees Matt outside and his room door open, so she gets a crazy idea to go inside. She sees his old toy train and the door with a padlock. She goes to another room and sees a lot of creepy toys and porcelain figures, some hanging from the window. In the middle of the room, there's a big red cloth on the floor, which is really weird, but she leaves it as it is. She walks around and sees a picture of a woman. Matt walks inside, looks around for a bit, and goes to his room. Maya's dad is outside crying, with Maya just staring at him and getting flashbacks of her as a kid. She goes for a jog and still gets terrible flashbacks of her as a kid going through experiences. She sits on a bench along the road for a while to clear her head. Maya is seen sleeping in her car as Eileen comes with a creepy smile on her face and knocks on her window. She teasingly asks if Matt has already sent her packing, but Maya doesn't seem to remember her, so she reintroduces herself. She says she's on a jog and usually treats herself to some donuts. She offers her some, but Maya refuses and later agrees since Eileen doesn't want to take no for an answer. Matt is seen taking some medication in his van and sees Gabriel taking pictures of the house and the surroundings. Matt walks up to him to ask what he's doing on his property, so Gabriel introduces himself and tells Matt that he loves taking pictures of old houses, nerdy things like that. Matt tells him that the normal thing to do when you're on someone's property is to ask for permission. Gabriel apologizes and says he's here to drop something off for Maya. He hands an envelope to Matt and asks him to help give it to Maya when she gets back. Matt goes upstairs and slides the envelope under Maya's room door. Eileen and Maya are sitting in the park and chatting as Eileen munches on a donut and sips a cup of coffee. She tells Maya about her childhood with Matt. She says during the summer, Matt usually goes around mowing lawns, and any money he gets from it, he uses to buy donuts and share with her. They eat so many donuts that their mother wonders why they usually don't have an appetite for lunch. Maya asks if they've always been in the same house. Eileen tells her that they have and have also been the only kids on the block as of then, so most times, it feels like summer will never end. She says their parents are usually away from the house on some sort of trip, but they always find ways to pass the time. She asks Maya if she's been here all her life. Maya tells Eileen that her house is behind the school. She asks about her family, and Maya tells her that her dad raised her after the demise of her mom, but he has health issues now. She goes down memory lane and relays the story of her sister's abduction when she was 11, and it was announced on the news. She asks Eileen if she knows about it, which she does. It's something the news aired, including every flyer and poster. She tells her it isn't easy, and riding the bus feels like hell because everyone constantly stares at her. When she gets home every day, she goes to check her room to see if her sister is back, but she never comes back home. Up till today, she's still missing. Eileen asks for her name, and Maya says it's Elise, a very pretty name. Eileen goes on to ask if she has any plans besides living in the same house with Matt. She says she's trying to save up for nursing school, and this cleaning job is all she has. Eileen says she has to leave and thanks Maya for having coffee with her, and Maya thanks her for the donuts. 
Matt is outside the house eating a slice of pizza as Maya walks past him. He calls out to her and says someone was around for her when she wasn't in. Maya asks if it's Emily, but he says it isn't. He tells her that it's a guy named Gabriel. He says Gabriel is kind of nosy and asks if it's going to be a regular thing because he can always get someone else in place of her. Maya begs him not to and apologizes, saying she hasn't given Gabriel or anyone her address. Matt says it's okay. He tells her that he knows she was out with his sister having breakfast, and his sister threatens him not to get another cleaning lady, or something bad is going to happen to him, making Maya laugh a little. He tells Maya that all he needs now is a cook, but she says he'll have to pay her for that. He says he's going to the store, and asks if she needs anything, but she says she doesn't. Before she walks away, Matt stops her, and tells her that she looks nice, before continuing to eat his pizza. As Maya gets back to her room, she sees the envelope by her door, and picks it up. Maya goes around cleaning again, then she looks outside to check if Matt is around. She opens the basement door, which Matt tells her is off limits, and goes inside. She looks around for a bit and sees a bunch of suitcases. She hears footsteps inside the house, knowing it's Matt. She tries to go back upstairs but it's too late, so she quickly hides in a corner. As Matt comes down to the basement, Eileen follows him. They start talking and Eileen asks him why now, of all times. He tells her it's already been settled, and he's selling the house because he's done. Eileen asks what's going to happen to Maya if he does, and he says she's going to have to find somewhere else. Eileen tells him to go ahead, and see where that gets him. She gives him a better option to take his time on that decision. Feeling like she's threatening him, she leaves him there to think, and goes back upstairs. Maya starts to look for a way out. She sees a window she could crawl through, but it has some nails holding it down, so she picks up a hammer and uses it to displace the nails and finally gets it open. When she gets to the front door, she realizes that it's locked and remembers that she left her keys inside. She sits outside on the porch and waits for Matt to get back. When he does, he sees her outside and opens the door for her. She goes straight to her room and starts to think. She picks up the envelope on her table and opens it. She sees pictures of a little girl wearing a yellow dress in front of her parents' house. She looks at everything and starts to tear up. It seems to be a picture of her little sister, who has been missing. She starts crying and goes to the bathroom to throw up. She looks up at the small vent in the wall and goes to get a ladder. She climbs up, uses a screwdriver to open it up, and brings out a small box hidden inside. She sits down and opens it. Inside the box, she sees a small teddy bear that looks like it's made out of very thick cardboard and also some crayons. Seeing this makes her start to cry. She picks up a paper from the box and sees a drawing made by a kid. On another paper, there's a message written also by a kid. At this point, she can't stop crying. Tears drop on the paper as she reads it. Matt is in a house standing by the wall painting it and staring at a little girl who is drawing and coloring with her crayons. An old lady comes and commends her work. She goes to meet Matt and thanks him for coming over today. She explains that things have been a little chaotic around as her daughter is visiting from Tulsa, and the little girl seen sitting on the couch is her granddaughter, Alexis. Matt looks at the little girl and asks what grade she's in. Her grandma says she's almost done with the second grade. Her grandma doesn't see her often and says she'll like to spend as much time as she can with her granddaughter. The grandma asks if they should open the window so the smell of the paint can go out, which Matt agrees to. She goes to tell her granddaughter to go play outside while Matt finishes his work. As she goes out, Matt picks up his phone to text someone while the grandma looks outside to see her granddaughter playing and doing cartwheels on the lawn. Matt asks the grandma when Alexis's mother is coming back home, and she says tomorrow because she's visiting some college friends. She would have preferred flying, but right now, things are very expensive. The grandma asks if Matt has any kids, but he says he doesn't, only two nieces, which can sometimes be quite a handful. The grandma looks out the window again, only to see that Alexis is not there. She rushes outside to check but doesn't see her. So she starts to cry because her granddaughter is missing. Back at the house, Maya opens up a wardrobe and picks up a knife, looks at it before putting it back. She continues cleaning and then Eileen comes in. She calls out to Maya, but Maya can't hear her at first because she has headphones on. She says she's looking for Matt, but she tells her that she hasn't seen him. Just then, Matt walks into the room. He tells Maya that his sister heard a mouse in the house, and he would like to put some traps in. So he asks for permission to put some in her room tomorrow, and she says it's okay. Before he leaves, he gives Maya some money, and tells her that it's not fair to do all the cleaning in the house and not get paid, and she appreciates it. He tells her that she's basically part of the family, with that creepy look he's always had. Who would want to be his family? Maya asks if Eileen has any children, but Matt says she doesn't, even though she'd love to. Matt is in his room playing with his toy train when Eileen walks in and is angry because of some texts on her phone. She seems very anxious at the moment and asks Matt if he has any more pills. He says they're in his back room. He begs her that he doesn't want to be a part of what's going on anymore, but she doesn't listen to him, so he tells her to let him do it, which she agrees to. She claims she'll keep watch, and then goes out of the room. 
Eileen quietly walks into a room and puts her boots on the floor. Matt picks up some pills from his table and cries while taking them. Eileen goes up the stairs and barges into Maya's room but doesn't see her there, so she gets angry. Maya walks down to the basement with a flashlight and picks up a saw to use and cut through the padlock. Eileen goes into the bathroom and sees that the vent in the wall is open. She goes to Matt's room and sees him lying on the floor. She shakes him, but he doesn't wake up, so she lays there too and holds him a bit before screaming out loud. Maya gains access to the locked room and sees her friend Emily lying unconscious on the floor. She sees another kid there too and goes to her. It's Alexis. She cries and says she wants to see her parents, so Maya calms her down. Alexis asks if those bad people are going to be back, and Maya says they won't. She takes Alexis to the window and tells her that she wants to get her friend out of there too, and she's going to need her help. She says to help her up the window, and once she gets out, she should run to the nearest house to get help. Alexis asks if she'll be okay, and Maya says she will. She tells Alexis that once they answer her by the door, she should tell them to send the police to the house. 630, Rockingham. As soon as she gets out the window, Eileen comes down the basement and points a gun at Maya. Maya is surprised that Eileen is the mastermind behind it all. She asks where her sister is, and Eileen says she put her out of her misery, even though she's Matt's favorite. She says that their initial target is her. She's the one they want. Maya asks Eileen why she's doing this, and she replies, saying it's because she wants someone to keep all to herself, and her dumb brother is such a nice distraction. Now that's all over because he's no longer in this world, her friend's dying, and she will too. As she gets ready to pull the trigger, Maya curses and uses the blade in her hand to slash her neck. As Eileen lies lifeless on the ground, Maya realizes what is happening, and is shocked by her actions, which is the reason she's still alive. Sirens get louder as the police approach the house, along with other rescue personnel. Maya sits on the ground reminiscing about everything and is glad she's still alive.